Hey, let's talk about the proper shot placement on a black bear with archery equipment. Stay tuned. All right, so today we're gonna to talk about proper shot placement on a black bear. I, this is a, can be a difficult thing because black bears are inherently a tough target. Now, I know they're big, but the color of the black bear, if we're talking about one that's not a color phase, we're talking about a true black bear, and the position of their leg and their anatomy lends itself to a tough target. It's just the way it is. Uh, matter of fact, as a, as a guide, we have a lot of clients that will, they'll be positive they shot that bear in the sweet spot. And if we do get a recovery, we find that oftentimes it wasn't even close. And it's not necessarily the hunter's fault. It's just a judgment thing because bears are tough. You have this all black, target, you have shadows that play into effect, you have a lot of belly hair hanging down depending on if it's a spring or fall bear, and again on top there can be a, you know a lot of hair there which kind of decreases your target zone. But the biggest thing is when you're dealing with a black bear in a low light morning, low light evening, shadow conditions, if you're hunting over bait and you're in a heavily wooded area, you're talking about a target that is just tough because of shadows and everything else. You're looking at a black blob at whatever yardage, so it can be difficult. So today we're gonna to talk about where exactly you should try to hit that bear and what circumstances uh, you can work with to help you make sure that you are getting getting into that sweet spot. So out of the gate, I will tell you um, over the years of guiding bear hunts, I am a huge fan of a double lung shot on a bear, a broadside double lung shot on a bear. Now slightly quartering away is fine, slightly quartering two uh, may be fine, but I don't like that because if you only get one lung on a big bear or even a smaller bear, you do run a risk of not recovering that bear. And that bear can even survive a one lung shot. We have seen that in the past where a, an archer has shot a bear, got a pass through even on one lung. We track all over, we don't find the bear. And in the fall, a rifle hunter shoots a bear. And as we are gutting that deer and processing it, we see the perfect mark of that broadhead going into the rib cage and one lung or a part of one lung has some tissue damage to it and that gives you an instant view that that bear was tough enough to survive that single lung hit. So yes, there's other circumstances. There's a lot of circumstances when we talk about shot placement and you can get lucky and hit a bear or any other animal in a cruddy place and still throw a clot that kills that, deer, uh, that bear or deer in a short distance. But bears are inherently tough when it comes to being able to survive a shot that you think should have put them down. So let's talk exactly about where that double lung spot is. So if you're looking at a bear and he's broadside and you follow the crease of his front leg, it is right behind that crease. And you always want to make sure that that bear's leg that is facing you is forward. This is a key point. I know it gets exciting. I know it's hard to wait but that leg has got to be forward. Now, even though the lungs do extend past that leg, as that leg is back, because the position of the lungs when we look at them, kind of center mass, maybe a little bit low, but they do encompass a large area. But in order to hit both of them and be sure of it, the sweet spot is right behind the crease of that front leg, and you can really get into it much better when that leg is forward. Not only that, but the leg on a bear is a tough, tough deal. And the scapula as well is designed totally different than a white tail and can be almost impervious to archery equipment. So let's talk about that for a second. So this is a scapula from a two-year-old bear. It's pretty small, you know, it's not very big at all. And if I compare that to a two-year-old white tail, this is what you're looking at for size. So not all that big of a difference, but inherently in bone structure, there is a lot of difference. When you look at a whitetail scapula and you look at this entire area in here, okay, this is the, the part of the scapula here. This is the part of the whitetail scapula that has the scapular ridge. If you get an arrow into this paper thin spot right in here, you're gonna get pretty decent penetration. And in fact, in some setups, you're gonna get a pass through. Now, you may not if you hit anywhere else along that ridge, of course, or down here at the socket, but you do have a nice area where you could get away with getting through a whitetail scapula. 
When we look at a bare scapula, we see that there are only three thin spots and they are not thin like a whitetail scapula. You have this first spot right here, that is pretty thin, and you have this spot here, thin as well, and then a teeny tiny edge right here that is also considered the thinnest part of the bare scapula. But on the bare scapula, you have two scapular ridges. So you have this big one that runs almost down the center, and then you have the smaller one here on this outside edge. Those are thick bone areas. They're very thick. And when you compare that to the whitetail, you can see the whitetail scapula is very thin. Even the ridge from this view is thin compared to the ridge of the bear. It's much thicker and much tougher to get through. If you get an arrow through these thinner spots, you can consider yourself lucky when you shot into a bear and you probably aren't gonna get enough penetration for a pass through. And if it is the shoulder that's facing you, you may not even get into the vitals. So I'm, I'm, I'm hitting this a little bit hard because I'm just telling you, you gotta avoid this. Cause if you can imagine this on a big bear, you know, this, this bear here, this two year old, this probably was a 130, 140 pound bear. And so there's, you know, it's pretty formidable even for that size of bear. If you're looking at a three, four, five, or when we're talking about bears, we get into bears that are 10 plus years old, this is now a piece of armor. So you want to avoid this. And the bone that it articulates on, if we look at it from, this would be the side facing you. So when we you are looking at that shoulder that's facing you, the scapular ridges are, are pointed to you. The flat side is what articulates against the rib cage. So this goes back and forth on the rib cage like this. But if we're looking at this scapula and this heavy leg bone, which is really, really tough, heavy bone, it's basically a pipe and you don't wanna hit this pipe. So when we're looking at this, and this leg is back, you have completely closed your area off. You have made your shot window tiny. But as this opens up and this leg comes forward, now all of a sudden you've opened up this larger space and given yourself a lot more room. So when you're concentrating on your target, when you're looking at that bear, all you're looking at is waiting for that front leg to go forward. Now, if you're hunting over bait, it's usually not a problem. It's going to happen. It's just a matter of time. The bear is there for a reason. He wants to feed. He wants to get his food. And if he's not spooky, he's relaxed, you will get your shot mostly. But your chances are higher of getting it with the double lung shot. Plus, if you get a pass through, you're dealing with a ton of blood. It's a great shot for tracking. And I, it definitely brings the bear down, in my opinion, over the years, tracking all these bears, a double lung shot does result in a shorter blood trail and shorter tracking job. We've seen bears that are adrenaline up where you have hit them in the heart and they still are able to retain enough blood to keep on going some extra distances. And again, that is just our personal opinion from our experiences, but that has been the case where double lung every time has seemed to be a quicker recovery. So that is also something that you should consider.